Good morning, everyone. Grace and peace to you, and welcome here to St. Luke. My name's Brennan, and I'm one of the pastors. I'm coming to you this morning from the St. Luke Community Garden here right outside our church. Our service today is going to center around themes of wellness that involve nurture and community, and I look forward to diving into that story later in the service. But for now, I thought I'd take a moment here, surrounded by all that is good and growing, to invite us into a simple time of centering. Let's take a deep breath. Find a restful posture. And take a silent moment to consider what is good and growing around you. Maybe that is something from the garden, a tree, some form of nature. Maybe it's a relationship or a silent hope you've been holding on to. I invite us to dwell with this sense of goodness and growing and may it it lead us into a posture of worship here this morning. Friends, let us cultivate this time together as we join in our centering music. Please join me in the opening prayer. The dawn of a new day dances across the earth, painting a tale of the wonder of God. How good it is, how wonderful to live together in unity. Love and faith come together, justice and peace join hands. Your spirit breaks forth in the beautiful biodiversity of all creation. With open hearts and voices raised, we sing of the spirits moving. Thank you. 
The scripture this morning is from the 13th chapter of Matthew, verses 31 and 32. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Hi everyone, Nora here, and I want to take a minute to just talk to our children and our youngest, because today we are doing something special, something that we haven't done in like 23 weeks. It's been so long. Can you guess what it is? What's a special thing we do as a community that we haven't done since we haven't been coming to church? Okay, how, did you guess it? It starts with a C. Communion. That's right. We haven't been able to do communion because it's something that we do when we gather together. And so since we haven't been able to gather together, we haven't been able to do it. But today, we are gathering together in our homes, but through the video here. So we are gonna take communion together. So this is a good time so we can get all of our communion supplies together. So what do you need for communion? What do you need? What do we use for communion? Do we use that? bread? So we have bread and juice. Those are our two items, there are our two elements that we use for communion. And I like to have the bread on a plate and the juice in a cup so that we can just have them and set them aside and make them special. And I have a special cup, this goblet right here. And you look right here, it's sitting on my special plate that matches the goblet. So I'm gonna take these off my shelf, take these off my shelf, and I'm gonna go put some bread and some juice in them. Will you come with me? And now by the magic of video, I'm in our kitchen. And here is where I'm going to get our juice. So I opened our refrigerator, what kind of juice do we have? Hmm, well we have grape juice, but you might have different kind of juice, that's okay. It's okay to even just use water. The people at the time when Jesus did this, they drank juice because that was like the safest thing for them to drink. But, and we do that to remember Jesus and remember the beauty and life-giving fellowship that can come when people gather together and share a good meal. But we can do that with water too, if we need, um, or milk or apple juice if you're in for a lucky treat. Um, and then we need some bread too. Now you can use crackers or gluten-free bread if you can't have gluten. I have this sort of fancy bread because in a bit, I'm going to get to rip it in half. That's my favorite part. Uh, so I'm going to put the bread there on my plate and I'm going to pour the juice in there once I'm not holding my camera with my other hand because it's hard to pour and, and film myself at the same time. So all these things are ready. Next stop, take it to the communion table. Let's go. All right. So here we are. We're at the communion table now and I've got, see, I've got our candles lit because we're already into our service and I've got all my elements here. I've also put my juice into a cup, into a basin here, because I'm going to get to pour it and reenact some of Jesus' final ministry days when he shared the meal and blessed it and shared the cup and blessed it as a sign of our new covenant together, a covenant that we would be together and care about each other, even if we're not around anymore. So, And that covenant and that promise stays true today. We still care about each other. We still love each other, even though we can't be in the same room together. So today, in just a few minutes, we are going to share communion together as a symbol that we are still one united body of loving God's children. So be sure to have your bread and your juice ready. You can put it on a plate, a special plate if you have one. You can follow along and rip it when we rip it and pour it when we pour it. If you want to, you don't have to. But if you want to, sometimes that can be fun too. So I look forward to sharing this simple meal with you in just a few minutes. Be well, beloved.
Good morning and welcome everybody. I am coming to you here from the St. Luke Garden where things are in full flourish. Today we are going to hear a story that, yes, highlights the mission of St. Luke and our partners at DIW, but in many ways it is a story about how we care for and nourish ourselves as we care for the earth and care for our communities. Won't you join myself, Marissa Lundin, our summer gardener, and Chef Austin at DIW as we explore a unique path to cultivating wellness in our lives. Hi, I'm Marissa Lundin, and I'm the garden manager here at St. Luke uh, this summer. And um, I live in the area with my partner, Peter, and my one-year-old daughter, Joyce. And yeah, this is my first, first summer working here at the garden. So today in the garden, um, we have a lot going on. We're in mid-August, so we're approaching a really wonderful time of year where we're gonna have tomatoes ripening, um, our corn is almost ready to pick, and we're approaching a second phase of, um, of the garden where we're getting all of our final planting in. So this morning I seeded some carrots, and that will be our final batch of carrots that we'll harvest probably in late October. We're about to harvest onions and shallots. Those will spend about two weeks curing, and those make really great storage crops for you know fall into winter. We're harvesting cucumbers for our Thursday food donation and we have a variety of slicing cucumbers as well as pickling cucumbers and we've gotten pounds and pounds of them this summer uh, which has been really great we have them growing up on this trellis this helps with air flow we've had really prolific um, cucumber production this summer I've spent many seasons and summers growing produce um, usually for farmers markets and this summer it's the first opportunity I've been able to grow food for a really unique partnership with DIW and with Austin and working with the volunteers here at the garden and working with Judy um, it's all been just really humbling all the produce gets donated to people who who really benefit from really healthy, nutritious, and local food. And it's really been neat working with a local chef who lets us know what he wants. Um, he really cares about where the food goes too. He puts a lot of um, thought into what produce we give him and how he prepares it. And it's just really, it feels really good to know that all that produce goes somewhere that's, you know, it's appreciated, but it's also really benefiting um, local folks in the community. Well, it was great to hear from Marissa about what's been going and growing here at the St. Luke Summer Garden. Each week as we harvest our produce, we safely pack it up and then a number of lay leaders like Judy Gregg here helps to transport it down to Chef Austin at DIW so he can begin to work his magic. Let's check in with him next. My name is Austin Bartold. I'm from the Lakota Ray Ojibwe Indian Reservation in Hayward, Wisconsin. Uh, but I reside here in Minneapolis. And I uh, come from the Strawberry Moon. And I am come from the Bear Clan as well. And I am the the nutritionist here at the Division of Indian Work in, on 10th and Lake Street in Minneapolis. 
what I do here is I cook for the youth programs uh, and during the school year uh, the kids come through after school and, and I create a nice healthy dish for them and we do tutoring here uh, and before they go home to their families we also have a birthing program here that I cook for for the mothers uh, they'll, they'll sit down and eat too. What I do is I work with local uh, farmers, gardeners, uh, programs to to bring food here so I don't have to go shopping at the stores here so I want to try to keep everything farm to table uh, just like we did in the old days uh, we always we always had gardens we always you know got our own food gathered and stuff like that so this is a, a learning experience for the for the young ones too to understand what it's like instead of going to McDonald's or Burger King that you could come here and get a nice healthy meal and and be nourished for the for your day and so they're getting fresh vegetables and everything that that is brought from St. Luke's is put on everybody's plate so I'm gonna skin the walleye here and get the, just the flesh. A lot of people ask me why it's called the Y bone. And I will tell you why, and I'll show you why. Because it looks like a Y. Uh, when, when people are cooking, you always have a positive energy to you because that energy goes into the food and then that food is put on a plate and that food that's on the plate goes into your family member's body. And then that's why we, we never cook when we're mad or angry or, you know, uh, we always have that positive energy to come through because it's gonna go into not only your own system, but your, your relatives, your relative systems, and it'll make them happy. And that's when food will be completely eaten off, off the plate. And then once all the, you know, when we grew up, once all the, uh, the, the food was done and everybody's done laughing and congregating, everybody helps in the kitchen to clean. And, and so we get the next meal ready, um, depending on how big your family is. <laughs> so this carrot uh, came from St. Luke's. And so we're, we're going to uh, just utilize this. And we're just, we're going to see just a little bit. And what we're going to do, we're going to do a, a brunoise on here as well. We're going to get this nice and fine, uh, just because it's, it's going to, it's going to be mixed into the walleye. And since carrots are tougher, it's a root vegetable. We want to make it cook quicker. So in the, in the cast iron pan, I got the aromatics coming out from the onions and the garlic, and then this will cook real, real quick. When I moved out to the city, I was bringing that aspect, that mentality of how to bring good, nutritious meals to individuals' plates. Um, because it's very different from growing up from a reservation and coming out to a city. That's the beauty about when you bring food together, um, that's when the stories are shared and, and uh, people are, are uh, passing on the, those, uh, the life uh, for the young ones. And hopefully the young ones can pass it on to their young ones. And so we don't lose those, that, uh, the traditions and the culture. So here we have some, uh, Fresh tomatoes that came from St. Luke's, little cherry, little Roma, gold, uh, orange Romas here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, our walleye cakes and we're just gonna layer them on here. We got a little angle. And so this could be used for like a appetizer and whatnot. And then maybe just a little bit of cilantro on top. We're always taught that food is medicine. There's a purpose of why certain things are growing. Everything has a purpose in life. Food will actually help you and cure you. It's just whether you take the time to do it yourself or if there's somebody that can actually help you and, and give you a nutritious meal. Well, there we have it. 
from nurturing the soil to nurturing our bodies, from gathering the harvest to gathering the community, we are grateful for these many ways to cultivate wellness here in our lives, here in our gardens, and here in our communities. Take care, everyone. Amen. Hi, St. Luke. Nora here, and I have some announcements for you this morning. Coming up on Thursday, now that's August 20th, we have Harry C. Boyt, Senior Scholar in Public Work Philosophy and co-founder of the Institute for Public Life and Work at Augsburg University, will be hosting a Zoom forum called The State of Our Democracy is Troubled with Harry Boyd. This is um, based off of, from March 10, the Freedom House in the Washington bipartisan think tank studied democracies all around the world and noted that trends in the United States assigned to more fragile democracies and pressure on the electoral college integrity, uh, judicial independence, health care, and safeguards against corruption um, were some of the concerns from this think tank. So with the early stages of triple crises, COVID-19, economic decline, and demonstrations for police reform, a fourth looms over us. That's cataclysmic climate change. So with all these different compounding factors, there are concerns with the state of our democracy. So please join us on Thursday. That is at from 7 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. on Zoom. There will be links in the email this week. You can also go to our website for upcoming events on the calendar and find more information for how to get plugged in. Also, our, one of our founding members, Fran Bell, is turning 103 years young next week on Sunday. That is August 23rd. And this is a hard time to be celebrating your 103rd birthday because you can't get all the hugs that we know that Fran loves to get. So what we want to do is shower her with birthday cards and well wishes and notes. So you can send us a, your big wave of cards, send it over to, um, well, the, you can go online to the email and find the address there or contact me um, Nora at stluke.mn or Brennan at stluke.mn, even office at stluke.mn to get contact information for how you can reach Fran. And maybe our videographer has put that information here, perhaps? We'll see. Hopefully that works out. That's all for today, friends. And a piece of fertile ground 
inch by inch, row by row. Someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Plant your rows straight and long. Temper them with prayer and song. Mother Earth will make you strong if you give her love and care. Old crow watching hungrily from his perch in yonder tree. In my garden I'm as free as that feathered thief up there. Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Friends, long before churches had buildings, those who followed in the way and teachings of Jesus gathered to celebrate the ties that bound them together by sharing in a sacred meal known as communion. Today, we will celebrate in that ritual of nourishment. So I invite you to make sure that you have some form of bread and some form of cup available together as Nora and I prepare to walk us through the liturgy. As we do so, a reminder that part of the charge of this holy ritual is to recognize that we are connected to this community and to the Spirit of God, whether we are gathered or going forth as the scattered people of God seeking love and justice in the world. So this day, as we are feeling some physical separation, may we take hope and take promise in the hope of this spiritual and emotional and ritual connection. And now, dear friends, let us turn into a time of nourishment, into a meal of community, as we remember the night of Jesus's arrest when he gathered those whom he loved around a table, much like this, to share in a meal. During that meal, Jesus took bread and he broke it before them, blessing the bread and saying, take, share, and eat this in memory of me. For this bread is as my body, which shall be broken and given for you. As often as you eat in this bread, do so in remembrance of me. And now, dear friends, I will invite each of us where we are 
to take a moment to take our bread and receive this gift. And after the meal, we remember how Jesus took the cup, poured the drink, and said, This is the cup of a new covenant, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin and in hopes of a new life, that you may be nourished and filled with the love of God together. Let us now drink and remember this promise in our own lives. Friends, will you join me now in the spirit of prayer? Holy and nourishing God, may this simple meal of bread and fruit of the vine fill our bodies, our hearts, and our minds, yea, let that fill our very soul and connect us, though we are physically apart let this holy act remind us that we are still part of one body. Though we may journey separately, we will come back together again, and may the memories of Holy Communion shared in our midst of our Holy Sanctuary at St. Luke fill our minds and propel us forward with hopes and the promise of new life. We pray these things with grateful hearts, for bread enough to feed us, for drink enough to nourish us. As we pray the prayer of Jesus from New Zealand Book of Common Prayer. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, life-giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother to us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world, your heavenly will be done by all creative beings, your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, Free us for your reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen.
friends, let us go now in peace to love and to serve. Let us find ways to nurture beauty, to nurture wellness here in our lives, here in our spaces, and out there in our communities. May God bless and guide each of us this week. Amen. Good courage.